Over 50% of our state's general fund and general purpose budget is utilized in the Department of Human Services and the Department of Community Health. Those dollars are utilized for programs such as daycare, foster care, Medicaid, food assistance, and many others. Michigan must provide a balanced approach to fixing the problem. Sure, we need to provide the dollars for the essential services, but at the same time, we must police those programs which are open to abuse. I think that uh, the state, not, and not just the state, but every state uh, with their Medicaid program has come to a turning point, um, even as it pertains in the larger healthcare arena, is that we're not looking anymore at efficiencies in the way we currently de deliver services. We actually have to look at changing how we deliver services more efficiently, looking at technology, making investments in, in those areas so that um, we can offer services to more people at a lower cost uh, without hurting the industry, which is what we have essentially try been doing by cutting physician reimbursement rates, lowering eligibility requirements, and, and that type of thing. Uh, we should also certainly be questioning um, the accuracy of our record keeping, the transparency for the public and the legislature to make sure that the people who are obtaining these services are actually eligible for those services. Uh, I think um, the, the service delivery is the number one issue that should be addressed, uh, particularly as it pertains to, to Medicaid services. Uh, we run a clinic here. And most of the people that we see are on Medicaid and Medicare. In fact, I would say to 80 to 90 percent of our clientele are poor or are Medicaid, Medicare. Last year, I submitted about $850,000 worth of billing to Medicaid because that's what it costs. And that's a billing any doctor's office would submit. Medicaid to us only reimburses about 50 percent of what it actually costs to see a client. So we got reimbursed about 400000 which means I have to find $400,000 someplace else to subsidize my clinic who these people, individuals, don't have any other place to go to. Most doctors, if they do take Medicaid, and most of them don't, will only take 5%. Where am I going to send my 80% clients to those other doctors? Most doctors' offices uh, don't have interpreters or don't have any language uh, specialties. We will take people who speak Korean, we will take people who speak Spanish because we have uh, the resources to do that, the, the doctors that will do that. We're just providing a, a, a safety net for these individuals that there is a need to provide that service to. I think it's important to remember that simply by cutting Medicaid doesn't necessarily mean that we're saving money. Uh, on a balance sheet, it could certainly look like the state is saving money, but then essentially what you've done is removed insurance coverage for low-income persons um, who still then can access services uh, in generally more expensive forms by going to an emergency room. So those people are still obtaining care, it's just instead of the state paying for the care, the care is uncompensated. Uh, what happens then is that providers need to make up that uncompensated care somehow and so they begin charging the insurers and the private payers more. So either way, somebody's paying for this care. Now whether we do it at the state level and hold them accountable for how the, the services are delivered or whether we allow that to come through our own private premiums for our insurance is really a decision that the electorate needs to make.